I'm fortunate enough to own two amazing road bikes, a Trek Domani SL6, as well as a giant TCR Advanced Pro Zero Disc. And while there are a lot of similarities between these two, there are some pretty significant differences that do change up the ride quality and characteristics of each of these bikes. So today we're going over the pros and cons of a race bike like the giant TCR Advanced Pro, or a road endurance bike like the Trek Domani SL6. Now let's start with the similarities. Number one, they're both road bikes. The Giant TCR is a road race bike and the Trek Domani is a road endurance bike. The Domani can be a better gravel bike than the TCR. The TCR can be a better racing aero climbing bike than the Domani. At the end of the day, both of these bikes are designed to be ridden primarily on the road. Stack and reach on both of these bikes are set up almost exactly the same. Tip of the saddle right here looks like we're at about 27 and a quarter of an inch. Reach of the Domani from the nose of the saddle up to the bend of the shifter right there, 27 inches. The TCR was 27 and a quarter of an inch. The Domani is actually 27 inches in total. So they're both within about a half an inch of each other. And while that's not an insignificant difference, it's more than likely something you're going to be able to accommodate to with a shorter stem or a proper bike fit. They are both 11 speed Shimano Ultegra disc brake bikes. What this means is there's no drama on either one of these group sets. The TCR being electronic, <laughs> You hit a button, it shifts, no problem. The Damani being mechanical, you hit the lever, it shifts, no problem. I've never had any issues with anything being out of adjustment with either of these bikes. Never had any drop chains. The two by 11 group set has been absolutely flawless. And of course, they both have the same hydraulic disc brake system. Yes, disc brakes are more complicated than rim brakes. However, I can honestly say that I have not had to do anything to either one of these disc brake systems, aside from straightening out a slightly bent rotor to stop that ting, ting, ting noise that we all get or actually cleaning out the brake caliper once every couple of months. The gear range is very close as well. 5236 on the crank set on the TCR, 5034 on the crank set on the Domani, and currently I have 1132 cassettes on both of them. And it's really hard for me to tell the difference between the 5236 and the 5034. Of course, you could always change them around. But another nice thing about both of these bikes using the exact same drivetrain is I can swap the wheels back and forth without any issues. It's gonna bolt up being 11 speed and disc brake, no issues at all. Which leads me to my next reason. I purchased them both as versatile road bikes. Now I purchased a TCR about a year before purchasing the Trek Domani. And the reason why I got the TCR in the first place, aside from the fact that it just kind of fell into my lap in a local bike shop during the world's biggest bike shortage we've ever seen, is the fact that it can fit 32 millimeter tires. Expanse tires and 32 millimeter width. You can see there is the clearance. Yeah, there's the clearance. Side in the back. Very good clearance. Looking at other road race bikes like the Trek Imanda or even the Trek Madone Aero bike or some old school rim brake steel bikes, those bikes all top out at 28 millimeter wide tires. So having a race bike with disc brakes and 32 millimeter wide tires means that you can actually start to ride some serious gravel on this bike, which I've done before and the bike eats up gravel amazingly. Yes, 35 millimeter and 38 millimeter or 42 millimeter tires are gonna be even better on gravel, but I found that 80% of the gravel that I've done on this bike with 32s, absolutely flawless. Now, once purchasing the TCR, I wanted to get a gravel bike or a gravel adjacent road bike, which led me to settle on the Domani just because realistically I'm riding on the road 99% of the time, and it just makes a lot more sense for me to get a bike that's designed to be ridden on the road, but can take wider tires, such as the 38 millimeter wide tire clearance that Domani gives me, which means that this bike can ride rougher gravel than this bike since it could fit much wider tires. Uh, both these bikes being road bikes, being two by 11 versus the one by system or a dropper post or super heavy or super lightweight, just means that they both remain very versatile road bikes for what they are, and it makes them very similar in that manner. The geometry of both of these bikes are relatively similar. This was another surprise for me since the Domani being a relaxed endurance bike and the TCR being an aggressive race bike, you'd think that this would be super zippy, super snappy, very nervous feeling. And this bike, the Domani, would be slow, boring, and just 
basically make you fall asleep while riding it. But that is not the case at all. Looking at the geometry figures on the TCR, it actually has a little bit more relaxed geometry than bikes like the Trek Imanda, Trek Mendon, or other more aero race bikes. And this is just kind of nice because it's a little bit easier to steer, it's a bit more relaxed, but as soon as you want to put the power down and sprint, you can really feel that the bike turns into a rocket ship. It is super stiff. It just goes, no problem at all. Now the Trek Domani, you would think that it would be a boring endurance bike, very slow, not nimble at all. And while I can say, yes, it is easier to have a chill recovery ride or a nice slow ride than the Domani, the Domani, especially with carbon wheels and race tires, is no slouch either. Same as the TCR, you start standing up and sprinting, putting the power down, it wakes up no problem. It's stiff enough and it definitely has a lot more get up and go and a lot more agility and nimbleness than I thought it would since this is marketed as a super, super comfortable endurance bike mostly geared towards beginners. We have exposed brake hoses and shifter cables on both of these bikes. TCR going a bit more classic and traditional. You can see the front brake hose just goes underneath the bar tape and then just gets externally rooted to the fork. The rear brake hose, same thing from the bar tape and gets externally rooted to the down tube. So it does not go through the handlebars, through the stem, through the steerer tube. Amazing, no headaches the way that all bikes should be, if you ask me. Now the Domani looks like it has fully integrated cables. Well, once you look a little bit closer, you could see that the shifter cable and the brake hose gets routed underneath the bar tape and up and around the stem, and it enters the frame right behind the fork steerer. This is actually pretty interesting, and this is a design that I really like. It just gives you that nice, clean, integrated aesthetic, which I actually have grown accustomed to. However, it doesn't come along with the headaches of having the hydraulic lines and the shifter lines running through the handlebars, through the stem, and through the steerer tube. So that means if you wanna change your handlebar width, if you wanna change your stem, if you wanna change any of that, you can do it no problem. You don't have to disconnect brake hoses or shifter cables in this bike. So they're both very nice in that respect and very easy to work on when compared to other bikes that have internally rooted everything, which is something that I can never get behind at all, no matter how good or cool it looks or how aerodynamic it might be. So that's it for the similarities. Now we're gonna get on to the differences. And the first difference we're gonna talk about is comfort. Now the Trek Domani is a more comfortable bike, especially riding over rough roads here in the city. Now the TCR is still a pretty smooth riding bike, especially for a road racing bike. When you compare it to an endurance bike like the Trek Domani or some of my other bikes like my Wabi Classic and Wabi Thunder, which are made out of steel, out of those bikes and the Domani, the TCR is without a doubt the harshest. Now the TCR rode a bit smoother when I had it set up tubeless, but I decided to take a break from tubeless. I was tired of cleaning out the tubeless gunk in my kitchen all the time. The mess would be everywhere. It had to take an hour to do it every few months. Big headache. So I did go to tubes. This bike is currently running 28 millimeter tires and the Domani is actually running 30 millimeter tires. So it's not exactly a like for like comparison, but the tire pressure in both of these bikes is exactly the same at 60 PSI. Size, TCR is a size large or a size 58. The Domani is a size medium. Now I did get a professional bike fit on the TCR when I bought it. However, if I don't ride this bike for two weeks, when I first get on it, it feels a little bit too long. And even though I have the distance from the shifters to the saddle set up exactly the same on both of these bikes, the TCR just still feels like I'm a little bit more stretched out. Whereas the Domani, if I take a couple of weeks off cycling and I hop back on it, I don't feel like I have to stretch out as much. And now if you've got a lot of time to actually spend riding, you'd probably be totally fine with the bike that puts you a bit more stretched out. For me, a lot of times life gets in the way. I have a lot of other commitments. My life does not just revolve around riding bikes. So having a bike that's a little bit more approachable when I'm coming off of potentially sometimes two or three months of ever riding a bike, the Domani would be a better bike in those situations, especially since you could usually set up endurance bikes so the handlebars are closer and higher. It's just gonna make it easier on your neck and your body while you get used to being in that road cycling position all over again. Weight, all right, we're gonna take the weight of the TCR right now, hook it onto the saddle rail. 18.85 pounds, 8.55 kilograms. Remember, the weight is inflated. We've got Shimano mountain bike pedals on, a big heavy leather brook saddle, some bottle cages, and just some Lazine Lazine pen gauge pump on the bike. Trek Domani weight, 
21.22 pounds or 9.6 kilograms. So this means that the Trek Domani with carbon wheels and race tires is still over two pounds heavier than the Giant TCR. And this is with NV 3.4 SES carbon wheels and the same exact model tire, Schwalbe Pro 1, although this one, the Domani has 30 millimeters, the TCR has 28 millimeters, and the same Tubalito inner tube. Both these bikes also have the same model Shimano mountain bike pedals, and they also have Brooks leather saddles, which is making them both a lot heavier than they could be. But even though that makes the weight inflated on this bike, the weight is still inflated on this bike as well. And that difference of two pounds is pretty significant. However, the interesting thing about this is when I'm out riding the Domani versus the TCR, I don't feel the weight. I don't feel like this bike is slow because I have an extra two pounds on this bike. However, where I do feel that weight most of the time is carrying these bikes upstairs. I live on a third floor apartment with no elevator. It's a walk up and the staircase gets pretty narrow. And that is where I feel the heavier weight of this bike the most. Proprietary components. Both of these bikes have proprietary seat posts like a lot of carbon road bikes do nowadays, but the TCR has a little bit more proprietary components than the Trek Domani, making the Trek Domani a little bit easier to live with. Uh, the first thing I noticed about the TCR is it actually uses a thicker steerer tube, meaning that you can't just use your old FSA one and one eighth inch stems that you might have in your closet or you might get from your local bike shop. You have to order one direct from Giant. I wanted to go from a 110 millimeter stem to a 100 millimeter stem. I had to source one for eBay and pay about $120 for it. Now it's not that big of a deal since other stems cost $50 and instead of buying two or three of those stems, it just buy one at a time and it'll just, it'll feel the same as far as your wallet, but it's still something to consider. The next thing and the most annoying thing about this particular bike, which isn't much of an issue if you go buy a brand new TCR, is that 11 speed DI2. What this means is you either need to run a junction box under the stem or in the bar. This one actually has it in the bar, which again, makes it look super clean, but now it has electrical wires running through the handlebars. So if you have 11 speed DI2 and you wanna change your handlebar width or you wanna get a different handlebar, now you gotta buy extra tools and spend a significant amount more time to actually fish the electrical wires out and then thread them back through the inside of the handlebar. But that's not it. Usually aluminum handlebars don't have holes for the DI2 wires to go in. So now you're forced to spend four or five times as much on carbon handlebars and with carbon handlebars, what happens when the bike falls over? They could get damaged, they could get cracked. Now you can't ride the bike. Now you're forced to spend three to $400 on a pair of carbon bars. And you've also either got to take it to the shop so that they can route the wires through, which now you got to pay for labor, or you have to actually sit there and spend a couple of hours or however long it takes, I'm just saying a couple of hours to actually fish the DI2 wires all the way through the front of the handlebars. Now, if you're using the older mechanical Shimano or the newer 12-speed wireless Shimano or SRAM ETAP, which is fully wireless, you're not gonna have this issue. This is not really something that's against the TCR. It's just against the 11-speed DI2. And it's probably why Shimano moved away from having the junction box in the bars and went to just putting the coin cell batteries in the front shifters. So by far, that is the most annoying thing about this bike. I'm always scared that it's gonna fall over and I'm gonna crack my bars, and all of a sudden there goes $500 and a lot of hours of work down the drain. Whereas the Domani, I already changed the handlebars once. I could do it again. I could do it in a half an hour. It takes longer to actually wrap the handlebars than it does to take the shifters off, take the stem off. You wanna put a nice expensive carbon handlebar in it? Awesome knock yourself out. You wanna put a nice cheap FSA alloy compact bar that you can get for 50 or 60 bucks on Amazon? Awesome, knock yourself out. The choice is yours. It's a lot easier to live with a system like this than a system like this, the older 11 speed DI2 stuff. And finally with the TCR, it does come with carbon wheels that are hookless. A little while ago, a lot of people were very upset at hookless and I get it. It just means that we can't run tires higher than 72 PSI. We can't run older tires we might have. Like I have a bunch of Continental Grand Prix four season tires. I have an old pair of gator skin tires. I can't run them on these wheels because they're not hookless compatible. So I need to buy newer, of course, more expensive tires like the Grand Prix 5000 all season or the Schwalbe Pro Ones, which sometimes get a bit annoying and just feel a bit more constrictive. And the hookless rims greatly favor a tubeless setup. I am not someone that wants to deal with tubeless right now. It frustrates me to no end. This just means that 
I can't run my tire pressure too low because I'll be in danger of pinch flats, but I can't go above 72 PSI because now I could suffer a blowout and I could go down pretty fast, which could be catastrophic for me. But honestly though, this is not as big of a deal as I'm making it sound. I don't ever want to ride below a 28 millimeter tire. And honestly, I would always pick a 30 millimeter tire and run it at 60 PSI or at 55 PSI. That is a sweet spot in terms of speed and comfort for me. But if you want to run something like a Grand Prix 5000 in a 25 millimeter with tubes on hookless wheels, it gets to be pretty challenging because you can't run those tires too low because they're narrower tires and you might suffer pinch flats, but you can't really go too far above 70 PSI. So you can only run them between 60 and 70 PSI, the margin for error just gets very, very small. Whereas if you have a hooked wheel like the old MBs, you can start to run some of those more narrow tires at 85, 90 PSI if you want. Not an issue for me, but if you're old school and you wanna run nice, firm, narrow tires, you can't do that with hookless wheels. I also will say this was more of an issue when I bought this bike in 2021. We have a lot more options for tubeless compatible tires on there to the point where this issue is pretty much moot at this point. I still don't like hookless wheels just because it feels like the bike industry taking advantage of cost cutting measures and trying to sell it to us and saying it's better when realistically it doesn't make much of a difference at all. It's just a cash grab for the bike industries. All right, next difference is mechanical and electronic shifting. While they are both Ultegra 11 speed disc brake systems, the TCR uses the DI2 electronic, the Domani uses the older, now discontinued 11 speed mechanical system. Now we can talk for a long time about the pros and cons of both systems and it probably warrants its own video. It's such a big topic. However, let's just go over the basic. The pros of having the DI2 on the TCR is you never ever have to replace a shifter cable ever. Just plug the battery in once every couple of months and you're good to go. This eliminates not only a lot of frustrating maintenance of replacing the shifter cables and housing, but ongoing adjustments. Like if the cable stretches out, if the cable gets gunked up, you hit a button, it shifts exactly the same every single time. Long as you keep your drivetrain clean and the battery charged, there will never be any difference in the way this bike with the DI2 shifts. It's also a lot easier to administer a shift. You can keep your hands wrapped nice and tight around the handlebars and just use your middle finger or your index finger to just hit the button. And this is something that I've found comes in handy if you're actually trying to get somewhere fast and you wanna shift really fast. The shape of the Shimano 11 speed DI2 hoods are a lot smaller and look a lot more like the rim brake hood they used to make than compared to the hoods in the mechanical system. And some people tend to really like the smaller hoods. I tend to like the way the bigger hoods look. So I prefer these hoods or the bigger 12 speed ones. They have a bit more of like a horned look, but this just comes down to personal preference. A lot of people definitely prefer the smaller sleeker hoods than the bigger, more bulbous hoods of the mechanical systems. Now onto the cons of the DI2 system. Well, it has a battery in the seat post, meaning that if you leave the bike sit for a couple of months, you're gonna wanna make sure you remember to charge it before you go for a ride. Otherwise you could actually lose your battery charge out on a ride and you'll be stuck in either the big ring or the small ring and you'll just have a couple of shifts left in the rear, meaning you're essentially riding a single speed. And while it is a lot simpler to use and omits a lot of maintenance, it is a more complicated system the way you set it up. We went over earlier about how the 11 speed needs the wires routed through the handlebars, which just makes it a much bigger headache. I also mentioned you have the battery in the seat post, meaning the wires go down the down tube up through the seat post and then out to each derailleurs. Now it does make it easier since the entire system runs off of one battery versus having four separate batteries like SRAM's ETAP system. But this just gives it more of a potential for a wire to get nicked if you're riding off road or if the bike falls and it gets damaged, the derailleurs can just stop working like that. So when something does go wrong, it's a lot bigger, it's a lot more catastrophic. And we also have to talk about planned obsolescence. Something that I've actually recently discovered is if this bike falls over and let's say I need to replace a shifter or a derailleur, since it's the older 11 speed system that is really only a couple of days old, it's Ultegra R8050, I believe it is, it's very hard to get these extra shifters. You can get a left one for the front, but I can't find a right shifter 
that's good for the Ultegra disc brakes. You can find rim brakes, but you're gonna either have to get one used off eBay or search high and low for bike shops and potentially pay a lot more money than if you could just get one directly from Shimano or if they actually stock some of the older stuff. And when you add to the fact that if you drop your bike and it lands on a shifter or if the rear derailleur goes out, it can just end up costing you a lot more money in the long run just because Shimano is deciding to not manufacture them anymore and now you're forced to spend thousands of dollars to replace it with a 12 speed only for a couple of years to go by and they move to 13 or 14 speed, now you gotta spend another two or three thousand dollars to upgrade to that. Now on to the mechanical Ultegra on the Domani. First pro, it is going to be a lot cheaper. Last I checked, an Ultegra 11 speed mechanical derailleur can be had for about 70 or 80 dollars and they are pretty easy to find. Compare that to two or 300 for the 11 speed DI2 derailleur, you can see how the mechanical shifting is a lot more economical. Mechanical shifting is less likely to fail catastrophically. If your bike falls and lands on a shifter, if it lands on one of the derailleurs, it's a lot less likely it's gonna just stop working completely. You can usually get some sort of shifting performance out of it without just having to turn the bike into a single speed so you can just limp it home. It's also a lot easier to source spare parts for the mechanical since the industry is moving more towards the electronic stuff. So think of it like a trifecta. Not only are the parts more robust and likely to fail in a catastrophic way, they are cheaper and easier to find, which just means in the long run, it's gonna cost you less money and be less of a financial headache. The shifting can give you great feedback. If you maintain your mechanical system and always have it clean and always leave it adjusted properly, it's gonna give you some great feedback and it's gonna feel really good every time you shift. And well, compared to the electric stuff, it can just feel a bit lifeless, like you're just clicking a mouse and something's happening and you just feel the change in your feet. Now, some people don't really tend to care about this. I actually do like feeling the shift through my hand, feeling the click of the shifter. Similar to if you're actually out there using a camera with a mechanical shutter, you hit the button to take a photo and you feel it in your hand versus using your phone or an electronic shutter. You just take the picture and it makes a noise, but you don't feel anything similar to that. And the mechanical stuff can be just as fast, if not faster than the electronic stuff, as long as your drivetrain is cleaned and well lubricated and everything is adjusted and set up properly. You also don't have to worry about charging batteries or having wires running through your frame. Now the DI2 battery does last a very, very, very long time to the point where you never have to worry about it. You still do have those electrical wires running through the frame. And if you got the Shimano stuff, you have the battery in your seat post. And if you got the SRAM stuff, you gotta worry about having those batteries connected to the derailleurs. And with the mechanical stuff, you don't need any batteries, you don't need any wires. It's just a super simple system. Now onto the cons of the mechanical stuff. It does require more upkeep and more maintenance than the DI2. Remember we said earlier, as long as the DI2 doesn't get damaged and you keep that battery charged, you'll never have to worry about riding in wet weather, riding in inclement weather, or adjusting a cable, keep your drivetrain clean, everything's always adjusted. With the mechanical system, you have to keep your drivetrain clean, but you also have to worry about shifter cables getting stretched out, if things get out of alignment, or if you're riding in inclement weather, you can get some suboptimal shifts. And it's definitely something you can feel when you're out there riding your bike all the time. Now I should mention, I haven't really experienced a lot of issues with shifting in the rear derailleur. A lot of it comes down to the front derailleur. And it's when you shift into that big chain ring right there, it's almost, sometimes it can be binding and require a lot of force to push that lever from the small chain ring to the big chain ring. And this bike used to shift very well in the front, but since it's mechanical and the bike has a couple thousand miles on it, and it's also about three years old, it's getting to be time to replace that front derailleur cable, which is not something that I'm looking forward to at all. Add to the fact that I've already spent a lot of time and effort trying to get the front derailleur to shift better, adjusting the limit screws on each side, making sure the cable isn't too tight or too loose, and still having it feel a little bit tough to shift into the bigger chain ring is definitely the biggest con when it comes to the mechanical system. Now, if you're running just a one by system and you only have shifting in the rear, then it's pretty negligible. I say you wouldn't really need to worry about having DI2, but if you do shift between the chain rings a lot, that's where you're gonna really feel that extra effort needs to happen when you actually move your entire hand for the front shifter. First, the electronic stuff, you could use your pinky and shift, no big deal. With this one, you have to actually use your entire hand and swing it over. Next difference is gonna be the strength of both of these bikes. Now they are both carbon fiber bikes. However, the Domani being a heavier, more hardier endurance bike with aluminum handlebars, 
means that it's going to be a more robust bike overall than the giant TCR. And the mechanical system we were just talking about being more robust just makes the differences even more vast between these two bikes. So if I was commuting, if I was always riding off-road, if I was riding in the snow, or if I was always putting my bike in and out of a car, this bike is gonna be more robust the way it's set up with the alloy bars, and it's gonna be able to withstand impacts and falls much better than the TCR with both its carbon bars and the DI2 shifters, which can give you a lot more problems when it comes to impact resistance. And that two pound weight difference that we talked about earlier in the video, I would have to say that even though they are both carbon fiber and carbon is not very impact resistant when compared to steel, aluminum, and titanium, the heavier, more dense carbon of the Domani is going to be a lot less likely to crack than the lighter weight racing carbon fiber using the TCR. And with both of these bikes being modern day carbon fiber, they're not going to be as fragile as the carbon fiber of 10 or 20 years ago, just in my opinion. But a heavier bike with more aluminum parts and more robust shifting system does mean that the Domani is the stronger, more robust bicycle. Versatility. They are both very versatile road bikes with their disc brakes and their wide tire clearance. And even though the TCR is a race bike, you can still fit 32 millimeter wide tires and ride it on some pretty rough grass which I did about a year ago. A video should pop up right about now, and it performed absolutely beautifully on that gravel. However, the Domani takes that versatility a bit further and gives you that massive 38 millimeter tire clearance, which you can pretty much do any gravel you want on 38s. You might even be able to fit 40s in there, but you also get a much more relaxed position, a bike that handles a bit more stable, and you get a smoother ride with the Domani, meaning that when you start to venture onto more bumpy gravel paths, this is going to be a better bike overall than this bike. So when you're looking at these bikes, just at how fast they are in a sprint or how fast they are up a hill, of course, the TCR is better, but the Domani is not far behind in those particular tests. But when you look at things overall, like how strong is it? Is it gonna fail? Can you ride it off road? How comfortable is it if you take a season off? That's where the Domani really starts to be the much more versatile bicycle than the giant TCR. Last but certainly not least, looks. Both these bikes look absolutely awesome. Blue is my favorite color. To my eye, it just looks absolutely beautiful. And the blue on this bike is a bit more of a brighter navy blue, not like the darker navy blue like I'm wearing. And it really just looks very, very nice. But I'm also a sucker for black bikes as well. This was a very tough decision to make. However, I am leaning more towards the all black Trek Domani. Now sure, I do like the bigger shifters. I do like the integrated look and I do like the all black. But something I notice when I make some of my videos, sometimes I put a little desk right here and set the camera up a little bit further back and then I just have a blank background. But sometimes I end up leaving the all black Domani back there and it looks absolutely sick. And that's not something that I ever would do with the TCR. So that right there tells me yeah, the Domani is a little bit nicer to look at. It's just a little bit more clean. It's a little bit more well-balanced. It's just overall a really nice looking bike. I like the basic colors. The all black looks absolutely amazing. So while the TCR does look very good, I know which one I want to hang up on a wall and look at all the time. And it's definitely the all black Domani. So overall, which one's better, the TCR or the Domani? Well, I used to think that the TCR was the better bike through and through. I did a century on this bike. I did a lot of long rides and this bike always was just there for me, never had any issues at all. But I wasn't really giving the Domani a lot of attention the first year that I got it since remember at the beginning of the video, I talked about how I have a hard time riding both of them. I tend to favor one over the other. So while I used to favor the TCR and I was thinking about selling the Domani because it was slow, boring, and had a mechanical shifting, endurance bikes just aren't cool, I did spend most of my summer using this as my primary geared road bike. And I can honestly say with the versatility, with the added tire clearance, the fact that it's a bit more strong. So my pick would be the Domani over the TCR. I will eventually be putting this one up for sale, most likely. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Am I crazy for actually wanting to get rid of the TCR and going for a super heavy Domani? Do you agree with me? Do you disagree with me? What would you do? I really wanna know. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped. And I hope you're armed with better knowledge when you're out there shopping for your next bicycle, whenever that may be. It's totally okay to go with a more beginner-friendly, heavier, but more approachable bike than the cool, sexy race bike. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, thanks for watching.